Originated in what is now the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region in West China, the tulips have long been regarded as a symbol of elegance and beauty. They have made their way into gardens and flower arrangements all across the world and have been wildly considered as a symbol of spring and renewal. Towards the end of the 16th century, tulip bulbs came into the hands of Dutch traders and established roots in the Netherlands. With the ingenuity of the Dutch, this exotic flower was built into the worldwide icon we know today. Although these days tulips are commonly cultivated and traded in the Netherlands, many people are unaware that there are several regions in China known for growing and nurturing tulips. And the Holland Flower Park in Yancheng's Dafeng district, Jiangsu province, is undoubtedly one of them. With more than 30 million strains of tulips in the blooming season, the Holland Flower Park, or He Lan Hua Hai in Chinese, is referred by some as China's number one tulip flower park. Every year when spring arrives, the park attracts a large number of tourists who come to enjoy the magnificent sea of tulips cultivated locally in Dafeng. The people's celebration of the flower reaches a climax during the park's annual tulip festival in March, when many tourists buy tulips and decorate their homes with it. Meanwhile, just a few kilometers away from the park, it isn't hard to spot a tall man in his blue jumpsuit who's busy selecting the new flower bulbs to be sold for the coming year. I'm now on my way to visit Nico and yeah, it's just a peaceful little pathway here that's filled by natural scenery and there's a smell of flowers almost everywhere. Uh, I'm Nico, I'm a Dutch guy, I come from Holland. I'm born in a uh, tulip growers family. Yeah, I'm uh, 67 years old and I'm now working uh, for Dafung Gela Gwagai in, uh, in China, in the north part of Jiangsu province. Since 1998, Nicolas Geik, often referred to as Nico or Nico by the locals, have been regularly commuting between China and his home in the Netherlands. He has, however, spent the last 10 years focusing on his work at the Holland Flower Park in Yancheng's Dafeng district. As the only non-Chinese working in this area, Nico is well-liked by his co-workers and fellow floral farmers here in Dafeng. He's taught himself the language through work and practices, so communicating in Chinese comes naturally to him. Hello. Hello, Nico. Need some Okay. You know, and everybody knows me because if I go to my work, hi Nika, Zhao Xiang Hao, hi Nika, hi Nika, around you you have a circle of people that you feel happy with. So uh, in that way, yeah, you become connected and uh, you become one of them. So Nico, um, what is the Chinese phrase you say the most in daily life? Zhao Xiang Hao. Despite traveling between the Netherlands and China four to five times per year, Nico is always welcomed when he returns to Dafeng to stay and work among the local flower farmers. As someone who is fascinated with tulips, it is his passion to introduce this iconic symbol of the Netherlands to other parts of the world. Uh, because uh, already on a young age I understood that the tulips are, as a flower are very uh, valued in the world and that's because of the trade. In that way I become uh, very interesting in tulip and that makes me a tulip grower. And also the technology of tulips is very interesting. Interesting how? Poof. Uh, long story short. <laughs> uh, many aspects, the growing, uh, you can make them early blooming, you can make them uh, later blooming. You have the, the storage conditions, yeah, everything. Tulip growing is uh, pretty uh, high technology in agriculture. After harvesting, you have to clean the tulips from soil. And uh, that's very important because the tulips have to be uh, stored dry. 
otherwise you have uh, fungi infection. The chilies become rotten, then the bulbs become rotten. And then you have the, the preparation for the, the blooming time. So by the preparation of temperature, you can schedule the, the blooming time. So you can schedule, I want a chile blooming in January, or I want a chile blooming in, in uh, let's say, March. So that's different temperature, treatment. Nevertheless, getting familiar with the flower's habits isn't quite enough for growing tulips. Nico adds that technical skills are also required for his line of work. And then, uh, yeah, normally after harvesting and drying and storage, you plant them in, uh, in autumn. The winter is the, the rooting period, is the time that the inside the tulip starts will change to sugar. So that means the sugar is energy, and then uh, in springtime when the temperature is increasing, and then because of the sugar, uh, the tulip uh, start growing. The, sp the sprout comes out of the soil and then start growing. And then on, still on that time it is stretching, growing, because all the energy is delivered by the bulb, the sugar. Then uh, because of the process of assimilation, then the energy go inside in a new bulb, and then the new bulb is growing again. So that, in short, is tulip growing. So um, which step among the list you just shared do you think requires the most effort? Uh, that is the preparation, to, to schedule the, the time you want to have a tulip in flower. Well, tulips are spring bulbs, and many of them only flower reliably once a year. This means Nico and his team will go through the same process every year. The tricky part is when they schedule the blooming time using technical measures such as temperature control so that the tulips were at various stages of bloom when presented to the viewers. So that's like kind of by design in a way. Yeah, it's some kind of a design. Yeah. Yeah. Born and raised in a tulip-growing family, Nico has been taught how to take care of tulips from a young age. However, simply growing it back at home would not satisfy him because it has always been his goal to travel the world and seek out new opportunities. And Beijing became the first city on his itinerary. Uh, that was in April 1998. I arrived in Beijing and on that time uh, 1998, Beijing was a bicycle city. I remember lots of bicycles and almost no cars. And Beijing at night was dark, so that was an, uh, quite an experience for me on that time. Were you already a tulip grower back then? Yeah, I learned a lot about the, the details, how to do from my father in a, in a practical way. And I've been to the agricultural high school and then you get also the, the foundation uh, to do so. On that time, I had a tulip trade company so I have a trade company because I want to go in the world. That was my aim. So at, on that time I came to China, I was a uh, tulip businessman, a sales manager. I get the idea to grow tulips in China. So I was looking for a part, a Chinese partner. Yeah, and that uh, was a failure. Ah, uh, I see. But would you say that back then, in the early 2000s, it was hard for Chinese society or um, the Chinese customers or say the market in general, to accept tulips as a way of making money? No, on that time the, the tulip market was increasing. And also I had a strong belief that China uh, will be very prosperous. Already on that time I had the, the feeling. But I talk about the production of, 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 of bulbs, you know. So that was, an, uh, that was, that was a failure, not, not, not the marketing of tulips. The production of tulips in China, was a, the bulbs was a problem. Production of seeds in China on that time was a problem. Tulips, like many other spring flowering bulbs, require extended cold temperatures and delicate natural conditions to grow and bloom healthily. And any deviations from that balance can lead to failure, let alone attempting to popularize them in a completely different climate and soil conditions. To this day, the majority of flower bulbs in China, including tulips, are imported from a dozen different countries and regions around the world. 
The Netherlands, as one of the world's largest flower exporters, is undoubtedly at the top of that list, with its import volume to China exceeding 100 million U.S. dollars in 2022 alone, and that is according to data released by the China Flower Association. Back in the early 2000s, however, attracting like-minded Chinese partners as well as sufficient funds to import and grow tulips together was no easy task for an individual entrepreneur like Nico. That, in turn, explains why he was excited when receiving the phone call from governmental leaders in Dafeng district of Yancheng in 2013, inviting him over in the hopes of establishing a tulip flower park under joint efforts. Uh, my first impression of Xinfeng uh, Dafeng is that it was a green city and a clean city. So that means there is more development than the, the surrounding uh, cities. So that attracts me a lot. And then uh, I had a talk with the party secretary and he informed me about his plan to create a tulip flower park. And he told me we have the finance for it. So everything then together makes me uh, to come to Dafu. Located in East China's Jiangsu province, Dafeng is one of the three districts in the coastal city of Yancheng, which is an area known for its wetlands and saline alkaline land. Locals said that the today's Dafeng was once saline land a hundred years ago, and growing crops and plants was a big issue. But Things turned for the better when a Dutch hydraulic expert named Hendrik Dleike was invited to Dafeng in the beginning of the 20th century. There, he designed and built a modern farmland irrigation system that successfully converted the seashore's saline and alkaline terrain into fertile soil. And in order to honor Dleike's contribution and the 100-year-old connection made between China and the Netherlands, therefore, the Holland Flower Park was set to be established in 2014, and this time, Nico took up the task. Together with his team, Nico had to wash the salted soil with water carried through pipes in order to create an ideal soil condition for tulips to grow. And then we make some uh, improvements on it, uh, as uh, I show you uh, of yesterday in the park. So we make the hills, we drain off the water. Uh, so that it was a huge improvement because then also you tackle the salt problem. Yeah, in that way uh, we started. Yeah, but it was really uh, we start from bottom up on that time. Yancheng could now utilize the saline alkaline land thanks to years of tree planting and hard work done to improve the soil. It is now a major agricultural city in Jiangsu province with 11.6 million mu, or approximately 773,000 hectares of farmland, nearly half of which was converted from saline alkaline land. As a result, the once saline wasteland has become a fertile area with a suitable natural environment for the growth of, well, not only crops like wheat and cotton, but also flowers. The 3,000-acre Holland Flower Park now has 30 million tulip clusters and over 300 different types of flowers. In addition to tulips, many other varieties such as lily, rose, lotus, and sunflower are in full bloom throughout the year in Dafeng. However, success does not come easily. According to Nico, he had his share of concerns when he first arrived, unfamiliar and uncertain with the local climate and geographical conditions. Uh, in the beginning, I was pretty nervous because I was not sure of myself, you know, because then uh, you have a new environment, you are not uh, acquainted with the environment, with the climate in, in detail, not with the soil uh, in detail. So then you... Yeah, you have the, the weather report, you have the soil report, and then uh, yeah, that is the, 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 the instruments you have, the tools you have. And then you have to decide what policy you will follow. But really, honestly speaking, I was not 100% sure of myself. But it, uh, the result was okay. So it is very important you treat tulips as care, because they are very uh, sensitive for uh, damage. Initially, everything had to be brought from abroad, further proving how costly a business tulip growing could be. 
But with the local government funding and supporting him, this time Nico was given the chance to turn his experiences into practices. From basic bulb cultivation and sowing to the propagation and planting processes, Nico patiently taught the local farmers with his lifelong experiences in the field. Gradually, his calls attracted people to join. So they slowly developed a team of tulip experts and farmers. And how was it? Did the result turn out well? No, in, uh, not all varieties uh, grow well in Dafon. So from the 100 varieties, maybe uh, 15. In the beginning, we only do uh, five varieties. Last year, we have 25 varieties, but we go back to, to let's say, maybe 17, 18. But we have uh, different colors. So we have the red, we have the, the yellow, we have the orange, we have the white one. Anyway, you have an, uh, a range of types, you know. Indeed. One of the most fascinating aspects of tulips is that, once blooming, they provide viewers with a kaleidoscope of colors. Tulip colors have been thought to convey a variety of emotions throughout history, making them not only an indulgence for the eyes, but also an excellent choice of gift. For instance, red tulips are often associated with deep love and passion, while yellow tulips symbolize cheerful thoughts and sunshine. White tulips, which are the hardest to cultivate according to Nico, embody purity and forgiveness while purple tulips represent royalty and admiration, all of which has no doubt painted an enchanting and prosperous view for the Holland Flower Park. My favorite period is the blooming season. Says Nico as he recalls the ocean of colorful tulips from earlier this year. Uh, the, the tulips have, are blooming because then the Huahai Park has, uh, is blooming with tulips. So that attracts a lot of tourists. Uh, also, we have m many media on that time, uh, different media uh, like uh, journals, uh, TV stations, uh, all kinds of media. Yeah, and that is the crown on your hard working, right? Because then uh, yeah, that gives you a uh, very proud feeling. And also to work in the, in the blooming field is also, uh, yeah, that gives you a uh, happy feeling. Because also the weather is good, uh, the nice weather. You know, <laughs> like that. At the moment, the number of cultivated tulip varieties in the Dafon Holland Flower Park stands at about 20, all of which are suitable for the local soil and climate. With the exception of a few unusual ones, most of these varieties can now be cultivated in China instead of relying merely on imports. And as another spring goes and autumn comes, therefore, Nico says now is the time to aim higher and expand his team as well as their flower farm to a larger scale. And now we want to upgrade to modern production. That is the first step now. So now uh, I've done a proposal to the, to the leaders because I say to the leaders we have uh, next year we have about uh, uh, e by Arshi Mu, uh, 120 Mu. Uh, I'm not able to manage it anymore, uh, only with the, the help of manpower. So we need machinery, modern machinery. And after we have the modern machinery, we can expand. But the machinery is uh, quite expensive. And it is uh, high technology. So uh, that's quite a challenge to deal with it. Over the past decade, the flower park has seen the growth of Nico's tulip costs, while Nico has witnessed the progress of China's endeavor in going greener. And you mentioned many times that China will lead the world in the field of sustainable development. So what evidence do you have to back up this opinion? Yeah, I'm staying in China now. I live in China and I see that uh, China, the, the cars become very rapidly uh, electric driven. The public bus buses are electric driven. You see the wind uh, turbines uh, inside of China. You see the, the solar parks, you know. So then you see that yeah, China is uh, on the way to become a sustainable country. Also, the policy of the government is, uh, is the, the economy 
uh, has to deal with the, the green economy. And then let's zoom back to this park. How do you think it's um, put into practice here in Holland Flower Park? Are there any low carbon measures? Yeah, the new greenhouse, the Boli Dapang, uh, is uh, heated by the thermal energy in the soil. So in the, in the in summertime, they collect the heat in the, in the greenhouse and they put it down in the soil. In wintertime, they, they get it out and they heat the, 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 the greenhouse. So that is uh, pretty modern uh, sustainable uh, energy. Yeah, we are uh, also uh, now on the way to become uh, integrated crop management, so we keep an eye on our energy consumption. So if we can minimize the energy consumption, we will do it. Is it the same technology used back home? Uh, I use the technology from Holland. So also I, uh, I keep an eye on the developments in, in Holland uh, regarding a sustainable energy. Aside from the biomass heating mechanism, other practices such as in-time watering, clever temperature control systems and four-season constant temperature cold storage are all being adopted now in the park, establishing it in an original Dutch way of flower planting. Thanks to these advanced technologies introduced by Nico, tulips grow healthier and have a longer flowering period in Dafeng a place that is now flourishing with different types of flowers all year round. Feeling proud to have played his role in the local development, Nico shares that he enjoys his work and life here. In the meantime, his passion now goes beyond growing tulips, but rather on the journey it has taken both him and those around him. Along the pathway leading to the front gate of the park and on the bulletin boards close to Nico's research center, there are many pictures depicting working scenes of Nico and the flower farmers. In light of the attention paid to his work, Nico is happy that his efforts can now bring greater influence to the park, its facilities, and their tulip cultivation costs. <laughs> They say, Nico, uh, we are very happy that you work for Huahai. And they also see the opportunity of tulips. So then they say, uh, we want to use Nico as the brand for Huahai, as the ambassador. No, that is part, part, uh, that's part of my job. I feel it more as a compliment. Without hesitation, Nico speaks highly of the farmers who live nearby the flower park and have joined him in his calls. Together, they have brought more income and new opportunities to this area. Uh, in the beginning, we worked with about 20 locals during harvesting time. And now we are working about uh, 60 to 100 during harvesting time, right? And if it is not so busy, then we have uh, around 20. I have a good relationship with them and uh, we work happy with, uh, with each other. So, yeah, my impression is that they are very honest and uh, hardworking, really hardworking. And all I expect, oh, the, the living in China is, uh, for me, I feel happy in China. That is because the Chinese people are very hearty. The, the, the social living in China is, uh, is on a high level. Yeah, if I need something, I ask somebody for help. Directly they will help me uh, like that. So that makes that you feel at home in China, that I'm not homesick, I feel happy. Yeah. Yeah. With that, we conclude this episode of Footprints. I'm Yu Shan. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in hearing more about the lives of ordinary but incredible people in China, follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Just key in Footprints and you can find more stories anytime, anywhere. We'll see you next time.